look at who you were, and, and this isn't about you and, and hopefully other women out there who, in fact, have amazing careers and who are really clear in what they want to do. And whether it's a mom or a career or an entrepreneur, you know, the point of it is, is back in that period of our life, you know, we think about you as a young athletic female hanging up and hanging out, I should say, with a bunch of men. And you really had to figure out who you were going to be in the context of hanging out with like dozens of, you know, NHL hockey players, want to be NHL hockey players, athletes, if you will, all male, and you're a female. And it really was defining that because you're walking into a space where you're the only woman. How do you exist in that space, given who the men were in that place called a man's sport in hockey at the time? And, you know, you really think about it. You had to be pretty clear. You had to get there somehow. Uh, what was it for you in terms of when you think about that time and realizing that you're not one of the guys? How do you actually set yourself up? You know, I mean, there's lots of lessons learned. You were in the NHL for a number of years. so. What do you think was the big realization for you in terms of how you had to show up? Well, I think, thanks for that. I think the biggest thing, 14 years in the NHL, I, I don't know if that's, you know, a record <laughs> um, for somebody, but ultimately what I've learned of that and what I brought forward into my coaching and into our programs is living life backwards. I knew that someday it was going to come to an end. I was not in any fantasy that this was going to be me forever. I was going to be super hot, best shape of my life. And I was going to be 27 for the rest of my life. No, that wasn't it. I knew that one day I was going to step out of that environment. And what I wanted to leave for myself was a squeaky clean reputation. Somebody that would talk about me in the future would say, you know what? She really showed up. She didn't, you know, she didn't lead with her sexuality. She didn't drop her gear. She kept her nose clean. I wanted, I started setting those intentions very early on in my career because I knew how vulnerable I, if I made a mistake, screwed up, showed up at the wrong bar at the wrong time, dated the wrong guy at the time. And then ultimately I knew my reputation was, would be, would be compromised. And I wasn't prepared to do that. And I don't know how I knew that. I knew my mom had taught me a lot about being a woman, a woman in a man's world, but I, she never said, you don't have to be yourself. You don't have to not be a woman. You don't have to try to be, you know, put the boots on and be the guy, you know, be, go smoke with in, you know, behind the bar. That was never how I held it. But back to our future self conversation is I knew one day it was going to end. And mm -hmm. I wanted to be the person that could turn around and look and be proud of my career, be proud of myself, be proud of the values that I set and that I stuck that I, and I stood my ground so that when I was going to build my what's next, which I had no idea what that was going to be into the personal coaching and the personal and performance psychology realm. I didn't know that was going to happen, but I knew that I needed a reputation that was going to carry me forward regardless. And I think that's what we're talking about right now is round trajectory. I was working backwards from who I wanted people to talk about me in, in, in whatever way they were going to talk about me. I wanted it to be in a positive way. Mm -hmm.